Hello everybody and welcome! Today I'd like to show you something about the main new feature of Kerbal Space Program 1.2 and that is the update regarding telemetry of probes and communications relays. And in order to do that, first I would like to establish a communications network in synchronous orbit around Kerman. Well, you can find out what the distances needed for synchronous orbits are on the Kerbal Wiki. And for Kerbin it is 2.8 and something million meters outside of the planet. Okay, so we are at our apoaps and now we're getting the first relay out. I'm going to skip quickly ahead through that. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to establish just a synchronous orbit, I recommend watching Matt Lowne's video about this. He did a really great job explaining all of this. I'm just going through the motions here and there we go. We have a synchronous communication network around Kerbin. But what does the entire update mean for the regular player? You can see here we got a little probe and we're going to get this thing into orbit using the new and improved cheat menu of course, this is for demonstration purposes only of course. There we go, we have it in space and we have full probe control authority, meaning we can move it anywhere we like and we can also see in the display in the top left corner that everything is fine and green and dandy. We can also see the distance to the next communication point. I have established now links to two of my relays and a lot more relays on the surface because Kerbin has a lot of relays. But what happens if we go on the moon, or at least on the side of the moon that faces away from Kerbin? As you can see, we no longer have control authority. We don't have a line of communication. You need to be in line of sight of a relay or something, or Kerbin, to establish communication. So once we get out of the shadow of the moon, then we have established a signal. You can see here it is bouncing through one of my relay networks and now I have established the visualization of the network. I can see, there we go, we're going through my relay. So actually you can control things on the moon or in orbit around the moon with just a single probe core and its built-in antenna. But what happens when we go to Minmus? We are now in line of sight of Kerbin and my network, but no control authority. But as soon as we add the tiniest of antenna, there we go, we can already move along and everything has turned green. So the tiniest antenna of them all is enough to control things on Minmus, as you can also see here. Enough lines of communication established, but interplanetary travel is a whole different beast so once we are at Duna that tiny puny antenna is no good anymore because the distance is too great and we can't get a signal. Now as I established this antenna is not enough let's use another one the second tiniest so to speak. So once again no communication established with Kerbin what about the new high-gain antenna, the HG5, which is also relay capable, I might add? Well, it's not enough for Duna, so no chance there. But as soon as we use the HG55, the one that came with the Asteroid Day Pack, we have communication and we have control over our probe. So yeah. You need line of sight of Kerbin, of course, and you need a big enough antenna, and the HG55 cuts it as soon as you get to Duna. And, of course, the biggest one, the 88, or whatever you want to call it, the big communitron folding dish antenna, which is a lot bigger, also establishes communication with Duna. So, what about Joule? Let's get over there again, and... Yeah, if we try with 
The puny HG5, of course, no contact. And the same thing, unfortunately, is also with the HG55. Well, not unfortunately, predictably, basically. So we need a bigger antenna or more relays between Kerbin and Joule. But as you can see here, as soon as we have opened up our Communitron 88, we have contact and we can move about freely as we would like to. But what about the signal strength? Well, it is enough to use it, but you can see I'm already at the limits of my network. So as soon as I get further away from Tool, which means, for instance, ELU, there we go, we no longer have communication. Well, sometimes ELU's orbit cuts into the plane of the solar system, so it is in range, but yeah. Okay, so what about rovers? Well, on Kerbin itself, it's easy. You can drive them around anywhere you want, because there are so many relay stations around the planet that you alway, almost always have range. And yeah, the thing is, you mostly are not on Kerbin when you use rovers, so let's get to some other planetoid, well, actually moon, and the moon. In order to do that, I built a rocket without Kerbal Engineer, I might add, and probably way overpowered for the mission at hand. You can see here the main stage disengaging, the fairings disengaging. We're doing our translunar injection, well, transmunar injection burn. And then we separate the stage, even though we have way enough fuel in that second stage back there. And yeah, the purpose of this is just basically getting in orbit around the moon, which we did. And we also are in communications range. And as long as we're that, we are in range, let's establish a little network around the moon. Thing is, since the moon is so close to Kerbin, if you try to establish a synchronous orbit, you would get out of the sphere of influence of the moon. So my way of thinking is that if I establish polar orbits with some relay satellites, then I maybe have enough communication set around the moon that I could control a rover on the surface of the moon facing away from Kerbin. So in order to experiment with that, let's try to land on the moon. So th since I have way enough fuel in that transfer stage, I'm using it to descend. And this is my lander. Probably has enough delta V to land on its own on the moon, but yeah. In order to do that, I probably should have started burning a little bit more. Okay, get down there on the surface, and here is our tiny rover. This rover has just the tiniest of antenna. It's basically the Communitron 16, but flat. And yeah, as long as we are on this side of the moon, we are always in communication with Kerbin, but on the back side, we need help. And in order to do that, I established those satellites, and you can see here, the satellite has a link with the rover, and I can control it, even though it is dark, and even though it, we are facing away from Kerbin. But we have control over our rover, and we can explore the moon with this network. But I gathered this was not enough because the orbits are too tight and I expanded them a bit and I got even better control authority. So yeah, that is a bit about the telemetry and relays in Kerbal Space Program 1.2. I hope you found this helpful, so thanks for watching, goodbye.